Hi, in this video, I'm looking at this problem where we've got a billiard ball rolling along a smooth surface. It bounces off the wall, travels back the way it came, but with a change in velocity. It started off at five meters per second and finished off traveling at three meters, uh, 3 meters, 3.8 meters per second. And we're told that if the collision takes one millisecond, what is the average force exerted on the ball by the wall, or by the ball on the wall? Equal either way. So when we're looking at this problem, we're looking at force and momentum. And force is change in momentum over time. As a continuous problem, this gives us the differential equation that force is dp dt, where dp uh, is the change in momentum and dt is over the change in time. But we want to do this as a dis more discrete average. So as an average force, we need to look at this as the more discrete version. So we have force average, which is going to be delta P over delta T, which is again, change in momentum. It's this change in momentum over change in time. It's the same equation, just going from a continuous infinite problem to a more discrete average problem. So once we work our way through that, we just have to look at how we get delta P and delta T, change momentum and change in time. Well, the change in time is given to us. The collision takes one millisecond. So we just want to look at this delta P. So delta P is the change in momentum, we've already discussed that. So it's going to be the momentum before the collision minus the momentum after the collision. So we can write this as delta P equals the mass before the collision times the velocity before the collision, M1V1, minus the mass and velocity after m2v2 because momentum on its own is just mass times velocity. So we can have a look at the momentum before minus the momentum after because our formula for momentum is just p equals mv. So if we think about breaking it into a before and after case, we now have a formula that we can use. So if I go and start substituting values into my problem, my mass hasn't changed before and after, at least we're going to assume it hasn't. So for both cases, our change in momentum is going to have 150 grams as our mass. But before we do this, we've got to think that our mass cannot be in grams. Mass in all physics problems is done in kilograms, so we need to change our mass to just be 0 0.15 kilograms. So I'm going to have 0 0.15 kilograms for both of them because the ball isn't changing mass. And then before my bounce, I've got five meters per second. So I'm going to times by the velocity of five meters per second. So just to fix up my notation there. And then after the collision, we've got a velocity of 3.8. So I'm going to times this one by 3.8 meters per second. And then our formula had a subtraction in the middle there. So if I do this calculation now, we've got that our change in momentum is going to be 0 0.75 minus 0 0.57 which gives us a change in momentum overall of 0 0.18. And the units for momentum are kilogram meters per second. Literally the same units as we were using up there before. So now I've got my delta P. I've got my delta T. Remember that was one millisecond. So now I can go and use my overall formula to get that the average force, force A, equals delta P on delta T. So my delta P we just worked out was 0 0.18. And then we're going to divide by our delta T, 
which was up here as zero, uh, one millisecond. And one millisecond is going to be 0 0.001 seconds. Because we're going to have one millisecond equals, well, we've got to divide by a thousand to get to 0 0.001 seconds. So then all we have to do is work this out. So if we then go and divide this by 0 0.001, we're then going to get an average force of 180 newtons. So there we have it. For our ball that was rolling along a smooth surface, bounced off a wall, changed velocity, the force that was applied by the ball to the wall, or the average force over that time, was 180 newtons. And we got there through thinking about what average force means in terms of momentum and using the momentum formula and developing ourselves a formula for change in momentum for our more discrete situation where we've got momentum before minus the momentum after. Plug that in and we get our answer.